So they are based in Stockholm, Sweden. More specifically, they're located in this really old building that used to be a bank. Does that answer your question? Now you may be wondering why someone whose last multiplayer gaming experience was Overwatch is making a video about Embark Studios. Well, it's because I had a feeling there was some sort of mystery to uncover with all this. You see, I first came across the studio when I was searching through Steam's most wishlisted games. I saw the finals sitting at an impressive number 14 on the list, kept on scrolling because it's not the type of thing I usually play, although it did have a very stylish trailer. And down to number 40, Arc Creators, which I noticed had an equally stylish trailer. Oh, they're being made by the same studio, that's nice. And they're both free to play co-op shooters potentially coming out this year? First thought was, this is too good to be true. The more time and money you spend on a trailer and marketing, the less resources you have to actually make a good game, right? This is probably another the day before situation. But a quick search showed me that the finals is currently in its beta testing phase and has been receiving some pretty glowing reviews. So seems like they're legit, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Who is Embark? Why did they announce three games in the span of less than a year? And who the hell makes these trailers because they are epic? In order to understand what's going on with all these games and Embark Studios, let's go back to the beginning of this story. Embark was founded by Patrick Soderlund in 2018. He was the chief design officer at EA and before that the CEO of DICE, who is responsible for the Battlefield series. Anyway, well-known guy with influence and experience in the industry. There are also a lot of other people involved, of course, over 250 employees at this point, so I'd say that Embark is pretty legit. I just hadn't heard much about them until recently. So their whole thing is embracing new breakthrough technologies in game dev and finding clever ways to use and automate tech to lower the barrier for entry into the game making space. In their words, doing something unpredictable and exciting is at the core of Embark. It's the reason our studio was founded with a talented team, a blank canvas, and endless possibilities. So how do we get from a guy leaving his job and starting a studio to three brand new game announcements? Simple answer is, they got to work. In just three months, from the founding of the studio to the beginning of 2019, Embark hired over 50 people and moved into an old and peculiar house, as they call it. If you're gonna create cool games, you might as well have a cool space to do it in. I believe the first creation they ever put out there as a studio was this environment test, with the goal of seeing how far they could push visual fidelity on a large scale with a small team. Everything in this clip was created by three people over the course of three weeks, using real-world scanned data, procedurally placed objects, and some other cool tools they've been working on. And this is a common theme in all their work making tech work for them and trying to lower the barrier of entry for game development by essentially working in a smarter way. In Patrick Soderlund's words, we think it's too hard for people that aren't professional game developers to create games, and we want to blur the line between playing and making with games and tools that empower anyone to create. Just like anyone today can produce their own videos, write their own blogs, or make their own music, we imagine a world where everyone is able to create and share meaningful interactive experiences. So we were teased with their first project, a game set in a distant future about overcoming seemingly impossible odds by working together. By July, the team was approaching 80 members, with half of them working on the game that would later become Arc Raiders. And by now, the game was far enough along in development to be in the playtesting phase. A few members of the team traveled to Iceland to take pictures, which would be used for photogrammetry, or the art and science of extracting 3D information from photographs and converting them into 3D models. Just one of the many ways they're trying to make game development a little bit easier. But Embark isn't only working on games. Around a quarter of the studio is focused on a more long-term mission a platform they hope will let anyone create interactive experiences, even people who have no prior experience with game development tools. One of the ways they're working towards achieving this goal is by promoting and using Blender and creating free tools for it. If you didn't know, Blender is a free open source 3D creation program, and it's the reason that a lot of people have been able to start their careers as artists, animators, and developers. And in this day and age when software like this can be extremely expensive, having a free option helps marginalized groups, younger people, and just those who aren't sure if they want to commit to this as a hobby or career yet, try their hand at 3D. Blender also has an extremely dedicated and supportive community. 
Long story short, Embark is doing a lot of cool things with Blender, and if you're at all interested in game dev, I'd go check out their blog post about it. But what about the games? Isn't that what we all came here for? In December 2021, Embark was finally ready to announce their first game, Arc Raiders, a free-to-play cooperative third-person shooter where you and your squad of raiders unite to resist the onslaught of Arc, a ruthless mechanized threat descending from space. Cool. And then on August 8th, 2022, they announced its delay to this year. Aww. A couple weeks after that delay, on August 23rd, the finals, previously named Project Discovery, was then revealed. It seems like this game was just closer to completion than Arc Raiders was, so they pushed that one back and placed the spotlight on the finals. Ever since, things have been going well for them, with the closed alpha starting in October 2022 and the beta starting 10 days ago on March 7th. If those two games weren't enough for you, here's one more. Embark's creative playground, Title Not Final, was announced on October 28th last year with a call for early players. This one is being marketed as, well, a creative playground where you can play with your friends, build castles and space stations, talk with the community, and design minigames and challenges for other players. Some people were able to jump into this one in November, but that's about the last I've heard of it. I just thought it was interesting that they're doing something so different from Arc Raiders and the finals, and, you know, actually making something that goes along with their goal of helping more people create games. Now, I want to go back to the beginning of this story for a minute before I wrap things up. Those trailers. I watch a lot of trailers, believe me, and I don't think I've ever seen any others that come close to these in terms of just the little polish and flourishes all over. And that's all thanks to Embark's focus on attention to detail. It really is the little things that can make or break your experience with a game, or even its trailer. That's why Embark has put so much effort into things like sound design, which might not be a little thing per se, but it is easy to overlook. They've even given us a sneak peek into their process for capturing the sound of all the guns in the finals. I don't really know anything about actual game development, believe it or not, especially sound, so I'm not sure if this is standard procedure or not. I guess it just depends on a studio's budget, but I still thought it was cool. The other thing that stood out to me in their trailers, specifically for the finals, is their commitment to the theme. The finals is supposed to be this game show-like tournament that takes place in a virtual arena, and that's very clear from what we're seeing. From the in-game brands and sponsors, over-the-top commentary, defeated opponents exploding into hundreds of gold coins, and my favorite, Namatama. This little egg is, from what I understand, kind of like a mascot for the game and the tournament. I'm mostly just mentioning it though so I can show you all these different versions from the game's press kit. But all this stuff I've mentioned comes together very nicely to make this game look and feel like a high stakes competitive fight to take home the big prize. Funny enough though, Patrick Soderlund wasn't even on board with this first person team based shooter idea at first. He said, to be honest, I thought I was done with PvP shooters, having worked on them in one form or another for almost all my career. But a while back, some of us here put together a small pitch that was too irresistible to ignore. And I agree. it's a fun idea. I'm also really curious to see how they differentiate Arc Raiders and its retro sci-fi theme from this more futuristic, over-the-top thing going on with the finals. So, now that you know what this studio is all about and where they came from, all that's left to do is wait. It seems like the beta for the finals is going well, which honestly can't be said for a lot of new studios' overly ambitious first attempts at co-op shooters. The beta has gotten a ton of patches over the two-ish weeks that it's been out, which means that Embark is listening to players and is hard at work creating something good in a game that they can be proud of. And who knows, maybe I'll get back into shooters when this one comes out. It is free to play after all. There is no release date yet though. And if you have had the chance to try this one out, let me know what you think of it. To those of you that have made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you sticking around, and I hope you learned something. I know none of this has anything to do with the indie games I usually cover, but I still think it's fun to talk about new and exciting stuff going on in the gaming sphere as a whole. And if you are digging this game studio series and you missed my first video about Unseen, well, here you go.